Yes, yeah, so hello everyone. Welcome to WD18, the Watford Fan Channel. Thank you very much for joining us as we discuss Watford's pre-season draw against West Bromwich Albion at Vicarage Road. It finished nil-nil. The main thing is more minutes in the tank for the squad. The result is pretty much irrelevant at this point, and we got to see a number of youngsters run out uh, in the Watford shirt yesterday, which I have to admit, Sam, looked really, really nice. Um, my name is Jacob, joined by Sam as usual to discuss that, uh, and just general Watford chat. Really, we we try to make these as kind of informal as relaxed as possible. Um, on a Sunday this time, I was just saying to Sam, I've got a coffee in my hand. It's one o'clock, which is a uh, <laughs> which is normally time to wake up on a Sunday normally. Yeah. But um, Sam, first off, mate. Did you enjoy being back at the Vic yesterday? Because I was buzzing to be back. Yeah, I did. Do you know what? It was so weird. Like, I, I just like, it's been, it's been so long since my last game, which was Brentford, I think, in December, January time when fans were allowed back in. And it was just so weird walking up, um, walking up Vicarage Road, seeing the stadium, seeing fans walking in and then being back in the rookery. It was just, it was really surreal. And it was, I almost felt like, you know, when you're a kid and you're walking into the stadium for the first time and you kind of just see the pitch light and it lights up. In yeah, front yeah, of your yeah. and I kind of felt like that again. And, you know, it just made me even more excited for the Aston Villa game, which is in less than three weeks now as well. It's yeah, coming, is, it's coming quickly, it, isn't it? It's really creeping up on us. This is the thing I said to Shano about it's great to be back at uh, back at Vicarage Road for pre-season games, but there's something just a little bit different on like a Premier League match day. Like the atmosphere on that Villa game will be rocking. And to be yeah. fair, yesterday, just on that, the atmosphere was pretty good considering it was probably only, what, five, 6,000 fans in. The rookery was about three quarters full. The lower Graham Taylor and the upper Graham Taylor was obviously full as well. Um, it was interesting to see how many West Brom fans were there as well. Fair yeah. play to them. They travelled in their yeah. numbers. Fair play to them. They were, they were dotted around in the rookery and I think that was a little corner of them by the corner flag. Uh, by the family stand and I know Ben Foster went over and had a chat with them at the start of second half which I'm sure they appreciated as well um now but just really good to see fans back in the stadium I know the West the West Brom fans at one point were you know having it off with the Watford fans and I you know I, I'm happy I mean I, that's something that you just miss about football just that interaction with the home and the away fans so <laughs> yeah definitely on the, uh, on the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly and uh no, exactly. It's just, it, it's just it was just a nice it was a nice taste of what's to come. I think. Yeah, agreed. And it was a nice taste to see of this Watford squad actually, mate. Because we'll have a little delve into the the game yesterday. As we mentioned, the result is pretty much irrelevant for Watford. Um, but it's more minutes in the tank. It's uh, opportunity for the new signings to, to bed in. Who particularly stood out for you yesterday, mate? From from the players that that started. I think I think for me that the three big the three names I want to talk about. So. I want to start off, first of all, Jeremy and Gakia. And we uh, we spoke about this on the phone after after the game yesterday. And there's something about him that you I mean, you said he reminds you a bit of Wan Bissaka in his in his tackling technique and the way he stands up to attackers. And that, I know he probably didn't have the busiest game, and I'd like to see him improve on the ball a little bit more. But I was really impressed generally with his defensive awareness. I put a tweet up about how I was impressed with the positioning of the back four generally yesterday. And just on that, massive shout out to the trialist left back who came on from Messina, who put in a really, really good shift yesterday. The positioning of the back four on the whole was a real positive for me. Looked really organised, really stable as a whole. Um, so, so that's certainly something uh, that, that you can tell they've been working on in training. And, and Gaki, I thought, looked really, really strong yesterday. Whether he displaces Kiko Feminia, I'm not sure about that, but it's certainly a really good option to have. Um, second one who really impressed me was uh, Kucha Hernandez. Um, and uh, we'll talk about him much more, I'm sure, later on in the video. But there was just something about him that we haven't really seen in a Watford play in a long time. There was a certain, you know, I know we spoke about it a lot last season with Jao Pedro, but a certain arrogance and a confidence to his game, not in a bad way, but he looked to take players on. He tried two overhead kicks in the preseason friendly. At one point, he got absolutely wiped out by the West Brom fullback and looked really dangerous. And, you know, we'll talk about it. But for me, at least, he's not a starter as of yet. But I think he's certainly a player that when we keep it tight for 70 minutes, someone you bring on to stretch the game, that sort of thing, an injection of pace and skill. And the last one who I, I thought it's a good place to start off with a more kind of detailed uh, chat, because I know you were really impressed, was uh, the new guy in the middle, Etebo. Um First of all, quite surprised to see a number four uh, midfielder wearing the number four, which doesn't really sit well with me. I, I like them to wear really? like six oh. number eights. I'm a bit more of an old, I'm a bit old school with that respect, mate. I, no. I don't know. I always think of number four with Gerard in an English shirt. I don't know why. I'm trying to think of any, yeah. any other number fours. Peter Etebo, mate, he started the yeah. trend. 
<laughs> Free test of vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, he started off uh, um, the game quite shaky. Um, uh, for fans at the game yesterday, they would have seen he gave away a really sloppy foul um, just by the corner flag and the rookery and a couple of uh, a couple of uh, grumbles around where I was sitting thinking, you know, is this guy going to be good enough? But he grew into the game massively, looked really composed on the ball, was trying his best to control the game, albeit I don't think his um, Tom Cleverley and Dan Gosling had the best games yesterday. But he looked really, really promising and, and sharp. And he reminds me of, I don't know why, he's got elements of both Caput and Decore in his game at the same time. And I feel like that's something that could really serve us well, whether he starts or not. But I know you were really impressed with him as well. Um, so I think it's a good place to start in terms yeah, of... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I agree, mate. I think with with Peter, he um, I was very interested to see what his style of play was, and I think the way you described that with the core and Capu, that mixture, I think is a really good way to sum him up. I think the, the big thing for me is, apart from maybe a little bit of a sloppy pass in the first ten to fifteen minutes, he looked composed on the ball. I thought tidy when there was pressure from Livermore and the other West Brom centre mids. He did well to get out of the situation. Even when you felt like he was going to lose it, he managed yeah. to get his body in between. Really tenacious, actually, I thought, off the yeah. ball, bring it back. Um, I guess the, the thing for me is I looked at him and I thought I could see him. Well, I don't know whether we're going to play him at the bottom of a midfield three or play him in a two, potentially. But bear in mind, he's getting his fitness up. It's his first game. I was really impressed with him, mate. Yeah. I, and, I thought it was a player. Definitely. And I think I know I mentioned that foul and, and you mentioned perhaps giving the ball away uh, once or twice in the first 10, 15 minutes. But I feel like with pre-season, you can only really take the positives out of it because you feel like as these players get more, more match sharp and much fitter as well, they'll eradicate these sloppy mistakes out of their game as they get better as the weeks go by. And certainly I could see him playing kind of in that holding role, kind of sweeping up play, wiping things up, breaking up play. Much like we need a player like that, don't we? I think we, let's just assume that Hughesy does move on. That was his role, and yeah, I think Calibre is a bit more progressive, maybe, and loser seems a bit more progressive. We need that kind of destroyer in the midfield. And I looked definitely. at him and I thought he could play that, play that role. Yeah, definitely. And if we're drawing comparisons to other players who weren't at the game, it's I look at someone like uh, Hoyvier at Tottenham, who trying to have, he's not perhaps incredible on the ball, but he's just there to kind of just break up the play tactical fouls, that sort of thing. And I feel like that destroyer in the middle of the park would be really important for us next season. Yeah, agreed. It's, it'll be interesting to see how he gets on this season because he's played Europa League football a couple of times. I think it was Getafe and I, was it Galatasaray was he at last season? Or it was, it was it Galatasaray, yeah. Yeah, he, was, he played Europa League yeah. football. This is a guy who's got, who's got pedigree and I think because he had joined from Stoke, there wasn't this kind of marquee signing, but he has played yeah. at a really good level and he was Stoke's player of the season, I think 18 to 19. Um, and a couple of Stoke fans said when he's playing at his best, he looks really, really good. And look, it's early days for Peter Etebo, but I, I was impressed with him. And I think we'll maybe look discuss that midfield balance. Sam, we started with a 4-3-3. It was Etebo, Gosling and, and Tom Cleverley. I think Gosling looked leggy. I think Cleverley looked a little bit leggy in there as well. Um, do those two guys, we're looking ahead here, and obviously there were some players like Loser who played in the training ground, the training ground game. But do you think those two would start for you if you were Cisco Munoz? That's a really difficult one because it very much depends on, again, what formation. It's a toss-up. Is again, you think four four two? I think it'll be a four three three. Second half, didn't we? We saw that transition yeah, exactly. from four three three to a almost four two two two. Like have we played under Havi? Yeah, my gut feeling says that I think he'll go with both Cleverly and Gosling in the first game. I'm not sure who that third midfielder will be, but I think he'll go with players that he trusts for those first two weeks and perhaps slowly embed those new signings in. That's not necessarily what I do. I'd start at least Tom Cleverly. I think he's so important to this Watford team. I've, I've said it so many times over and over again. He just sets the tempo and, and tries to put the team on the front foot. He's massive to this Watford side. So I, Tom Cleverly for me starts, but you, yeah, you can't really look into those two performances yesterday. Both look quite poor, quite leggy. But again, you imagine that uh, as their fitness builds up uh, close to the season, they'll both be completely fine. And yeah, I, I just thought Etabu carried those two yesterday. I think it's fair to say. Yeah, there was a couple of times where he looked to press and there was no real cover, I think. That was probably the only, the only criticism I had of Peter, and this will obviously take time, was there was a few times where he went in to press. Yeah. And a massive gap in the midfield and obviously that will take time as he gets to know the two lads and and their roles um we'll have a look through your comments before we move on actually one thing i wanted to mention sam this is a 
saw a tweet from Aaron Bennis, long, long uh, time viewer of the channel, friend of the channel as well. Um, he said, obviously, just the preseason friendly. Uh, I would put the tweet up on uh, on the screen, but we, we can't, unfortunately. Uh, make sure you go and follow Aaron, Aaron underscore Bennis 10. Obviously, just the preseason friendly, but the midfield really worries me if we don't sort out the huge Chalibur situation. Was impressed by Etebo, and hopefully, Loser can offer more progressiveness, but still need one more. What do you think? What do you make of that, mate? It all depends on where about Hughes, where Hughes and Chalibur go. Um, because people forget we've got a lot of midfielders still who perhaps aren't fully back. We've got the likes of Domingos Kina, Tom Daly Bashiru if he gets fitter. Um so so it very yeah. much depends on, on who comes who uh, yeah, no, it very much depends on who comes and who goes. So yeah, it's too early to say that. I think for me, what worries probably me about this Watford squad as a whole is that we've got a lot of depth but I don't know how much quality there is in terms of that depth. And I, I, by quality, I mean Premier League quality, because I've got I've got no doubt that we've got players in there who play for Cisco and give 110% every week. But unfortunately, sometimes that's not enough. And I feel like that perhaps we need that one more quality signing, perhaps in the middle of the park. That's so we're like, we're like a Kapoor in that first yeah. season back. Yeah, yeah. yeah exa ex exactly that. Um, and I feel like we're probably with one signing away from me being fully confident going into next season. Um, so, so I do agree with Aaron in that respect, but I feel like I will say it again, we have to get rid before we can bring someone in. Yeah, I think that's uh, thoughts echoed actually by Cristiano Giretta. I read a, he does a few interviews with uh, Italian publications and he mentioned in one of them that we were linked with uh, Morton Thorsby from Sampdoria, uh, the midfielder, and he kind of quashed those links. That it wasn't really going to happen, but he did mention that they're looking, I think, for one experienced Premier League midfielder. Now, the yeah. one that actually came to my head was um, Mario Lamina. Um, yeah. from, from Fulham obviously they've just been relegated he'd be looking for potentially a move away and we've been linked with the move for him before before we went to Southampton I thought so he'd I think, be one yeah, uh, gone, I think he's gone to Nice now hasn't he yeah so that, that um, um, it'd be interesting to see if we do bring that one more go on mate yeah no I, I'm, I'm calling it now um, but I know perhaps it's not the marquee signing I texted <laughs> him this um, here we go <laughs> yeah Fabian Fabian Delph apparently wants to leave Everton. I would I would put money on him joining us with the kind of the player that Giras is looking to bring in. He's versatile as well, and with the Adam Messina situation as well, I think Fabian Delph can fill in at left back. He did for Man City a couple of years ago when Benjamin Mendy was injured. So I feel like uh, that would not shock me at all if that. Yeah, that that's a good point. That's very good for these Fabian Delph can play left back, and the left back yesterday was Adam Messina and. It, me and my dad, we looked at each other yesterday and we were like, oh, please don't let this be serious. It did look like a toe injury. So fingers crossed that shouldn't be maybe a bruised tie. It didn't look broken or anything like that. I think it was just precautionary. And obviously the trialist came on and, and did well to fill in. Um, let's just assume, Sam, with yeah. this with senior injury, we, we discussed it on the phone. Do do we bring in another left back? What, how do you assess that left back situation with Messina, Danny Rose, Kika Feminier could play left back and Gaki could play left back. Can you see us dipping into that market or not? I don't think so. I think we've got enough to kind of, you know, square pegs around holes, that sort of thing. We've got enough to move around. And if, if Kiko's not fit first day of the season, I, ju I just feel like we haven't, it's not worth the money. Um, I know, I don't know how tight we are financially, but there's certainly more areas of priority when, you know, for example, we've seen Craig Cathcart can fill in at right back and, and we move Kiko or Ngaki over to left back. I'm I'm just saying there's certain ways around it where I feel like we don't have to see it as a priority. I don't think we'll see Danny Rose fit for a couple of months. So let's hope that Messina is OK, which I imagine he will be. I think it'll be precaution. I, I imagine he might miss the Barnsley game next week and the Stevenage game midweek. But I reckon he'll be fine. It didn't look anything too serious. Yeah, uh, fingers crossed with Messina. I agree, mate. I don't think it... Well, We'll find out, but it didn't look too serious. Um, thank you to everyone who's watching at the moment. Let's have a little look through uh, your comments. Um, a lot of comments. Uh, Sam says, I sat in front of you yesterday, Jacob. Yes, Sam. Great stuff. Uh, lovely to see you. Um, Dylan says, a trialist did well yesterday, Jacob. Yeah, agreed, Dylan. We both just mentioned it. The left back, I don't don't know his name, but he, he filled him well and held his own. I thought he did really well. There was a couple of times where he bombed on. Um Goss, I think it was one cross he played in, which was pretty good as well. I like the look of him. Um, Ollie the Waffle says, would you like to see uh, Ferguson? I think he's referring to Ferguson from Aberdeen, uh, Sam. Uh, I don't um, know if you've seen a lot of him, but he scored yeah. in, in pre-season for them the other day. Yeah, I saw and I, and I heard their commentator go, uh, let's hope Watford aren't watching or something <laughs> along those lines. Um, yeah, again, I don't think we can bring anyone in until we get rid of another a couple of players. Um 
and I don't know, I don't know if it's concerning that we aren't really seeing a lot of movement in terms of players going out. Uh, we saw a couple of really good loans this week, actually. Might as well touch on them now. Yeah, um, yeah the, the three of them were um, Adam Parks, who saved a penalty yesterday on his debut for them. Really good to see him doing well out there. Um, Tiago uh, Kuka, is that how I say yeah, it? Yeah, Tiago Kuka, yeah. Yeah, um, and Dan Phillips as well, who got a yellow card like, in 10 minutes into his debut. So that's something that Gillingham fans can ex can expect. And those three really are really, really good moves in my eyes because there's absolutely no point in them sitting around doing nothing or just playing for the under-23s. And it's allowing them to go out and get that experience for them to hopefully come back into the first team fold next year or in a couple of years. So really, really good moves with that. But in terms of the actual first team, I'm not sure if it's concerning that we're not seeing too many players move out. Uh, what I think will happen is, I think come deadline day, we'll see a, a few players go out to the likes of Udinese and CSK Sofia. Um, those two clubs, which are kind of are our main links at the moment with the Pozzos and Girata. So I imagine we'll see a few players go out go out there, but I'm not sure. I feel like we do need to get rid of a few before we bring some in. Yeah, agreed. Just to, just a to recap on that. So Thiago's gone to Doncaster on loan. Dan Phillips has gone to Gillingham on loan. Both League One clubs. And as Sam said, with the restructure of the academy of Richard Johnson coming in there, uh, it seems like we're targeting loans in, in, in the in in the in senior football because, as Sam said, it's all well and good playing under twenty three football and under eighteens, and that is that is part of the development. But those guys, Dan Phillips has had a taste of first team football. Thiago. Is probably one of the best players we've got in in the in the in the young ranks as well. So to get them first team football, first team men's football is absolutely vital, and I think yeah. that's a really really good move uh, by the football club. Freddie says in the comments, Kucho was great yesterday. Uh, Medupe was class as well uh, when he came on. I I mean he was rapid. Medupe. Rapid. There was yeah. one run down the left hand side, and I thought, wow, you are so quick, yeah. so <laughs> literally so quick. So quick, they're all, they're all options as well. What something that I took out of the game yesterday, at least as well, is probably with exception of Troy, um, we'll talk about in a minute because I was really impressed with Troy yesterday. And I know on social media, at least, he split opinion yesterday, but I was impressed at least. But with the exception of Troy, all of our attacking players are really they, they can play pretty much anywhere across the front three, and that's something that I think is going to be really good in terms of them. You know, it's going to be fluid in game interchanging in game you know the likes of um uh, um, um mabude could will be able to um you know go anywhere across the front three josh king i think could go anywhere across the front three um kucho can go anywhere across the front three and that's a really promising sign for us because in game you know perhaps a bit of a surprise on the opponent that sort of thing just switch up um certainly for me that was a positive i took out, i took out of the game yesterday yeah agreed i thought Cooch, just on kucho uh I, I, I did. I, it was a little bit of a, a tongue-in-cheek tweet that I put out about him taking us to the big time. But I, I honestly do believe it. he's got a um, similar physique to uh, Aguero, actually. Quite stocky, yeah. quite small. Um, the short, sharp turns of movement. He looks really, really bright, Kucho. There was one point where he got down the left-hand side and played it across when he could have easily cut back onto his right. And I thought, this guy is a player. And I'm hoping it's not going to be a similar situation to Luis Suarez and Purvis Estipinian who left last season in pre-season. But I think it, it's a bit different having Premier League football now. That's a great yeah. opportunity for Cucho to show his ability. He's been out on loan at Catafe. He's been out on loan at Mallorca. He needs an opportunity and a run in the team. And I think this could be, as Sam said, a, a good, good chance for him to prove himself. Whether he starts, is, is we'll have to wait and see. But he can play central. He can play on the left. He can play on the right. A versatile player to have in our front line. So I think it, I think he's definitely one to watch this season. Um Tom says, clubs hinted that success, Great and Parita are off. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if those three guys do move on. Um, Ollie says, what did you make of King? I, I thought he, I was I was impressed yeah. by, the, by the movement we saw actually from King off the ball. Of course, when he came on, a lot of youngsters were on the pitch and it kind of lost our creativity. So it meant we didn't really get to see a lot of him. But there's a few runs he made in behind. Number one, again, rapid. Number two, clever movement. And number three, if he can get in those positions this season, Sam, it looks like he could he could score a few goals for us. Yeah, no, exactly. And I feel like when he's playing around more mature players and more experienced players, it's nothing against the youngsters on the pitch yesterday, but he was making some, I'd say the best word is intelligent runs. Yeah. Um, I'd say, do you know what he reminds me of? I, we've spoken a bit about this as well, just in terms of movement, a bit like a Galo in that first season in the Premier League. And, I know you're quite keen for, for I think, Dini and King up front. You, you think it would work, don't you? I, I really do believe it would work, mate. And I just think, for me, the switch to the 
the obviously tactically we had switched to a four two two two, which kind of transitioned to a four two four really. Yeah, and I think the sign that we can play that system. I just think we're gonna we're. we're I would play Troy alongside King because I think Troy's best when he holds up the ball, as we saw yesterday, because there was some good flick-ons. There was some way we brought other players into play. And I think with King's pace and with his and his and his proven track record with goals, I think it's a waste not to play those two together for me. And I think particularly with the way those two could combine, could be I, I know it's if buts and maybe's at the minute, but I'm just really keen for us to play them two together. I think we could yeah. do well with those two. I don't I, I know it's 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 signing signing towards. Yeah, it's, it's certainly an option. And just on Troy, Troy as well, as I said, he kind of split opinion yesterday. Personally, I think he looked looked quite good. Um, I think he looked quicker than normal, more agile, winning headers, holding the ball up. Really good relationship, looks like, with Kiko and uh, with, um, Kucho and Saar. Um, so so I, I was really impressed with Troy yesterday. I completely understand that the, the other side to that argument, the people saying is he was playing up front, and I don't think he had a shot yesterday or a shot on target, at least. And he wasn't, if you look at his highlights, he wasn't really getting into the box. And obviously that's what you need from a striker, particularly when he's the only one up top by himself. But if it isn't a 4 4 2 and he's playing with, for example, Josh King, I don't think it's absolutely vital that Troy is getting shots off. I think he is able to drop a bit deeper and, and supply the, you know, the likes of Saul, the likes of King, the likes of Semmer, whoever's running off him uh, to, to kind of, create those chances but as I say when Troy is dropping deep it very much depends on the runners around him also filling in for in those kinds of situations and I felt that we did do that quite well yesterday I think we missed quite a few chances there was one where Deeney knocked it on and Saar was drawn goal and I think he hit oh, a penalty, penalty. Like that. <laughs> Stonewall penalty. No, Stonewall penalty. Um, but but I'm saying that that's where it that's that's where it's important that Saar makes those runs if Deeney is dropping deeper. Um, so I think it certainly could work. But I was really impressed with Troy yesterday personally. Yeah, let us know your thoughts on Troy in the comment section below. As I said, I think we get the best out of him in a two. So I'd be willing to see that this season. Um, we've got a comment here which says, Jacob, is Sierra still injured after Chile? No, he played yesterday, yesterday. Uh, the pre-season game against Brentford. And that leads on nicely to Charlotte's comment here, which says, any reflections on the Brentford game? Obviously, we didn't see it. But interesting, we played two friendlies so close together. We have a huge squad. I think it's 35 to 34 to 35 players, Sam. So good opportunity to give so many players a run out. What were your thoughts on that, Sam? Because as we saw on the bench, there were so many academy players and youngsters who, who came on, which was great to see and great to see them get an opportunity. But also, would you have liked to see them for the likes of Sierra out a loser um, playing at Vicarage Road? Or did you think it was a wise decision to get everyone 90 minutes and, and keep the fitness levels at the same for the whole squad? I think, uh, I mean, obviously I would have wanted to see them play at Vicar Joe that I've never seen Sierra out play in person yet, which is it's mental. Man man bun. What yeah. a man. And it would need to see the man bun. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I'm not disappointed with it at all. Um, I think it's important that we kind of, particularly those players who are just coming back now, I look at Dan Batman, Ken Semmer, um, Sierra Alta. I know not all of them played yesterday, but it's important that we're just easing them into things and, I kind of feel like the games behind closed doors at the training ground will probably have more of a stop-start sort of uh, sort of feel where, you know, it, it can be more flexible in terms of players perhaps taking a little break on, on not not like rolling sub-Sunday league, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, is more, it is more of a relaxed atmosphere than playing in the stadium in front of fans. So I'm certainly not too disappointed with them kind of having that game first before probably playing against Barnsley next week at, at the Vic or perhaps Stevenage on Tuesday night. So... I don't have that many reflections on the Brentford game. Wouldn't look too much into the results. It seemed a lot of under 23s played. Um, but yeah, good to see that we had uh, opportunities for players to have a run out. Yeah, agreed. I think we lost 3 1 in the end, didn't we, to Brentford? But as you yeah. said, the, the results are pretty much irrelevant at this at this point. Uh, obviously, you don't want to lose, but it's it doesn't affect. Uh, affect anything really. The main thing is fitness in 90 minutes in the tank. Um, there was a comment here about uh, Saar, Charlotte, again, Saar looked furious when he wasn't given a penalty Yeah, And Aaron says, how long was Saar lying down after not being given that penalty? He, does, <laughs> he, he does. just didn't get out, did he? Some of these tackles I'm seeing in pre-season really concern me. I think yeah. you, we mentioned one that in Ben Foster's vlog, you, you, you managed to spot Saar getting wiped out. 
Hey, that was yeah, one where... the preseason game against Colchester, and he's uh, I saw it in the corner of the screen, and Sars literally going in, and one of the Colchester defenders literally just wiped him out, and he was yeah. down for a little bit on from what I saw on the vlog. But yeah, the challenges that are going in, are... yeah, that that was that was um that was the um what was it that the the tackle on Cucho. That penalty challenge, even for one of our, I think uh, Foster wiped out their their striker. Yeah, at one point. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, know that, I, know, I know that wasn't deliberate, but it's not really in the in the preseason spirit, is it? Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's hope that we get nothing too serious. And I mean, at least I know Messina's wasn't from a direct challenge. I don't think, but. Let's hope it's nothing too serious. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I'll tell you what, just to wrap up, Sam, looking ahead to the rest of the pre-season games, um, we didn't really do a pre-season preview, but I, I we'll try and do, from what we see, um, I'm actually not at Stevenage on Tuesday, neither is Sam, but from the games we watch, I'll be at Barnsley. You're at Barnsley, aren't you, Sam, next Saturday? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm at the Barnsley game Saturday. Good stuff. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll give a review on that one, and obviously we'll try and find as many uh, much information about Stevenage on Tuesday and watch the highlights. Um, Sam, from the games that we see before now in the Crystal Palace game on the opening day of the season, which players do you want to see? What do you want to see from this Watford team? And what do we need to maybe improve on from yesterday, um, from yesterday's performance? I think start off with improvements. Um, I think perhaps a little bit more creativity coming from the middle. Uh, we've spoken about Etabu already, but I want to see kind of that, that kind of linking sort of between the midfield and the attack. Something I think that this Watford team has have missed for a few years now, even last season in the in the championship. And I feel like that's perhaps where Domingos Keener could have an impact next season. I know we've said it a lot, but I feel like that's where he could perhaps come in. Um so that's something certainly to improve on. Um and, and obviously finishing those chances as well that we were able to get into some really good areas, but just weren't able to have that kind of sharpness in our in our finishing. But that that will obviously come with time as well. Um who do I want to see? I think we have to be careful um, because we got a lot of players coming back from international duty and a lot of players coming off injuries from last season. Still, I think what Chalabar and Feminia are still recovering from last season. Um, so, we, so we have to be careful in that respect. But I think next week it will be good to see Imran Luza. It will be good to see Sierra Alta. Um, I'm trying to think who else there is. Perhaps Josh King from the start um, would be good to see. And uh, Ja Pedro as well, if he's fully fit. But as I say, you have to be careful. And I'm not too... I wouldn't read too much into it if we don't see certain players um, for, for, for the last couple of games in pre-season. Yeah, agreed, mate. Uh, hopefully, Zhao can recover quickly. From what I read on the club website, it looks like he's going to miss a few of the pre-season games, uh, potentially to start the season from what... Yeah. No, I, 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 that wasn't yeah. a bad sight, but I kind of got the impression that they're not yeah. going to risk him over pre-season. Yeah, I, I've got, I get the impression that he'll be out for the first couple of Premier League games as well. It's not, not confirmed. It's just the way it was worded. I just... Yeah, it looks like he might be out for the first two weeks or so. Yeah, it's about watching these injuries, isn't it? And Chalaba mm. and Nico, um, and Tom Deli Bashir, I think, is playing under 23 football. So it's just about managing the squad at the moment. And uh, that's the task for Cisco Munoz at the moment. And also trying different systems. As we saw, we switched from the 4 3 3 to a, to a 4 triple 2 uh, system in the second half. We got to see more youngsters get a run out. So, it, yeah, overall positive. Uh, positive nil-nil, which is quite weird to say, but a positive nil-nil. Um, but yeah, that's where we're going to wrap it up. Thank you very much to everyone who joined us today, um, a number of you on this Sunday. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday. Make sure you do leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to follow myself and Sam on socials, as you can see at just the bottom of the screen, and WD18 at WD18Fans. And we'll see you very, very soon for some more Watford content. Take care, guys. Up the audit.